like that, they are following the tradition of the British. They say, no, no, we are not using its sepoy mutiny. One of the members of the committee who resigned is Ramesh Chandra Mujumdar, R.C. Mujumdar. He resigned and wrote a book called The Sepoy Mutiny. That means he still follows the British Empire. Nirad Chandra Chaudhary devoted his autobiography published in 1952, 51, called the, To the Memory of the British Empire in India. And there are many people who are now dedicating their books and their political parties to the memory of the good old Pakistan. People do speak and they lie, but they cannot lie. Those who say that the number of martyrs in 1971 were three millions, that's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for many, many innumerable people died. Nobody counted it. And those who are trying to argue that, oh, that, there is debate and controversy about this, she is simply expressing her favor for the Pakistani point of view. There is no doubt about it. So, metaphors, this is what I said, in the defiles of the signifier, you cannot hide. So, the unconscious tells more truth. Now, let's come to this point. This Bangladesh has been fought over in the name of the Bengali language in 1952. This is the month of February, almost holy month. Why, but why everything in Bangladesh runs in English? Why, answer me, why our kindergartens, why maple leaves, masterminds, and all these schools? The, I'm not saying these are unpatriotic. These are truths, but the truth has a name. This is the unconscious of the Bengali middle class. It is not inside, it is outside. You wear your heart on your shirt sleeves. The unconscious says that you will bring 100 arguments, globalization, job advantage, competitiveness, and you name them. But the truth remains that you lied in 1952 to the peasants. You said that we love Bengali. But whether you love Bengali or not, you think that if you do not kill Bengali, you cannot learn English. And only in the month of February, all of a sudden everything becomes Bengali and then it goes away. This is the unconscious. So to, that's why I use the word intimacy and extimacy. At a marker as in a cake. Oh, I'm a pocket it is dead already. Hey, that guy. I'm not the intimacy, the intimacy, that guy. Jokon apni import lakhen, ibabe. It adi the ki chilo import. English version kulla ne and time hoye jai. Kaj ye itar dikhane korar door karna je tar por tia se pita kli the bolta hai to. Hey, that guy. Excellent. আপনার হৃদয় কি আপনার ভিতরে না বাইরে আনকনশাস কোথায় থাকে আমাদের ধারণা কি আনকনশাস গভীরে থাকে এইজন্য লোক অবচেতন আছে এই সমস্ত কথা কথা বলেছে এটা সব সময় বাইরে বাঙালি মধ্যবিত্ত অনেক বলে যে আমি তো বাংলাকে খুব ভালোবাসি কিন্তু সে তার নিজের বাচ্চা কি বাংলা মিডিয়ামে পড়া ইয়া দিস ইজ ট্রু আমার পথে ইংরেজি মিডিয়ামে পড়ার জন্য আমার কোনো আপত্তি নেই কিন্তু আমি মিশা কথা বলার জন্য আমার আপত্তি আছে So, any more questions, please? Thank you very much. Uh, sir, in your lecture, you have talked about the primal narcissism. So, do you think uh, this primal narcissism is a threat to the psychological peace of humanity or human mind? Good question. Thank you. It's a very interesting question. It is a fact that I love myself. And so it, it might sound like I am imposing a value judgment. The question is that I do not live by that. I try to pose myself as I am what is called an altruistic. There are two words. One is called selfishness or the altruism. Shartoporata and parathoporata. So the but I do not think it is a threat to mankind as such because civilization demands sacrifice. That's why the law of sacrifice has been given a name. It is called abstraction. It is called symbolism. What is called symbolic order is acceptance of the fact that we are guided by a law which is necessary to survive in society. That's the social law. First law is law of combination. For example, 
all men and women human beings are divided into genders and the relationship is guided by certain rules the psychological law and here is the interesting thing psychological law and anthropological law are parallel to each other in anthropology the first law is law of kinship Lebestros published his thesis in 1945 it's called elementary structures of kinship les éléments élémentaires du du parenté in french parenting means relationship that means kinship relationship so elementary aspects of parent relationship that means relationship here only two prohibitions two degrees of prohibition you cannot get married to your mother and your sister and then the whole world is open before you in certain societies it extends to first cousins in hindu society and christian society but without that no human society in its present shape would have been possible so for example animal societies do not have this rule but all non human societies have this rule now those races who tried to prove that that american indians were cannibals anthropophages they were lying nobody including columbus columbus's diary is not published there is not a single instance where columbus could have written that i have seen someone eating the flesh of their relatives he said that i heard someone told me then she told him he told him and told him it's like a hundred silsila this is a lie and the best writing on the cannibalism is a man by montaigne essay of montaigne whom shakespeare plundered and wrote it in his tempest so my story is that when you want to denigrate another community you say that they eat their flesh they marry their mothers but civilization demands that certain basic things be observed that is called civil we bury our dead but some people get so angry that they throw the dead body of their enemies in the arabian ocean sometimes people do that they, by doing that they simply prove that they are the ones who are savages it it doesn't prove anything else the law of civil and that is the foundation of the experiment that sophocles wrote in antigone i will talk about this later there are not two laws always three laws some people who want to make everything simple they want to make everything black and white there is an inner line they said oh antigone antigone defied the king's law the state's law therefore he she was following the god's law but she was not following god's law she was following another law it's called law of blood relationship it's a different thing it's in greek language it is called ate A T E This that if I translate this into English it will be like this a relationship it is neither god's law nor state's law there is a law of human blood relationship she said this man was born from the same womb as i was born from from the same mother and same father so without burying him I cannot go on living that would be worse than this that life would be worse than death I know death is a bad thing but living dishonorably is a thing worse so i would say if you say primal narcissism is only fake on the this story then antigone story would not have been possible so how antigone overcame that because of her subjection not only to the so called symbolic law but symbolic law of the second order because anybody can misrepresent symbolic law saying that as the kings i am the state let us say moi this is what creon said i am the state i am ordering so don't bury him she said that there may be a law bigger than your law so she raised the law of symbolic relationship to a second degree so to speak so that is why she ventured she gave up her life and at the moment when she was going to her grave she was lamenting and many poets including the great poet johann wolfgang von goethe said that oh i think this is something thrown up by later editors how can she speak this because goethe with all his genius like rabindranath did not understand this and i would argue jacques lacan did it is not for nothing that i said jacques lacan is the greatest thinker france has produced since descartes i would even say he is bigger than lacan descartes but let me not say too many things in one day it is the importance of the symbolic law which is the answer against primal narcissism but freudian ego psychology was messing up things it was the freudian ego psychologists who were supplying the killers in vietnam during the war 
Lacan opposed not only the Vietnam War, but also the Algerian, uh, the repression of the French in Algerian War. Lacan was a supporter of the Algerian Liberation Movement, by the way, if you don't so. But other, Pierre Bourdieu, Gilles Deleuze, and you name them. All of those buggers were racist, as a matter of fact. Foucault included. Derrida was quiet. So people often compare, oh, there is a Laka, there is a Derrida, especially in English and humanities departments, I see this abominous expression saying that, oh, Foucault, Laka, Derrida. <coughs> I mean, thereby they prove that they know nothing about Derrida, not even about Laka. Derrida is a child, born in 1930. Just even you take, they are not even of the same generation. When people absolutely have no idea about the intimacy of a person, they try to make him <laughs> estimate. Where is Lacan? I ask them. Is he French or not? He's against French imperialism. So how can one man have so much talent? That is something unbelievable. I said, why Lacan is so difficult? A third title for my essay could have been why Lacan is so difficult. Because we are idiots. <laughs> so Lacan will become easy because Lacan is a human being. I do not claim that I understand everything by him because he knows Greek language, which I do not know so well. He knows very advanced mathematics, which I don't know well. He learned Chinese, which I have not. And so there are many things I cannot even follow him. But so what? I cannot follow many things. I do not know the system of the galaxies. But that, does that mean that galaxies don't exist because I don't know? <laughs> they do. Sir. Yes, sir. sir. Some scholars recently demonstrated that uh, we can read... Uh, Lacan, we can have a Marxian reading of Lacan. So, uh, how is Marx close? Is Lacan, Lacan close to Marx? Yeah, in many ways. Let me be brief saying that. Lacan says, Karl Marx wrote to a book called Capital, everybody knows. But before writing Capital, he was preparing notes. And those notes are published or were published many years after his death. Maybe 20, 25 years. They are called theories of surplus value. Marx invented this idea that in capitalism, there is exploitation, but Marx did not invent it. He said that there are three forms of exploitation. Some take money in the name of rent, some take money in the name of profit, some take money in the name of interest. For example, Islamic, Jewish and Catholic religions used to say that to take interest, riba is haram. Right? But they never said that taking profit or rent is haram. Karl Marx said that if one is haram, all three are. And they are united in one thing. It's called surplus value. But therefore, Marx doesn't say that do not allow people to take profits. He said that profit, interest, and rent are of the same nature. Collectively, he gave them a name, surplus value. And the other is value. The worker produces more than he or she takes home. And the, what he leaves behind is distributed by the entrepreneur, gives something to the bank from whom he borrowed the money. That is called interest and give something to the landowner whose land he has borrowed to fill the factory on, that is called rent, and the remainder is his entrepreneurial profit. That is what we are teaching. But all three are called surplus value. Lacan was influenced by this idea. He called that this present crisis of capitalism is like a symptom. Lacan is correct saying that Karl Marx was the inventor of the idea of symptom. But Lacan is also correct in pointing this out and saying, therefore, following Marx, he says that people are not happy with this simple amount of pleasure. Pleasure has a French word called jouissance. If you can pronounce the word renaissance, you can pronounce this also jouissance. So Lacan says that people try to exploit surplus jouissance. He modeled this discovery openly under the style of Marx, under the influence of Marx. Marx discovered surplus value. Lacan says, I discovered surplus jouissance. That is the primal narcissism coming again to take hold of the world. So I would say, this is one. I discovered in my own way in the 1990s when I was studying in the United States that actually it was according to Lacan's study that I restudied Karl Marx's capital. That is my dissertation. And I found that Karl Marx's language is exactly what Lacan talks an unconscious language is. After, for example, how money is made, what is money, how credit money is served, how can you write a check and it serves like a money, how your credit card works is money. I studied this phenomena. I found, I solved my problem after reading Lacan's work. That's why I'm so grateful to him. He provided me with the grammar of studying money as a language. In fact, money is a language. That's why different kinds of interest rate spreads all happen. I studied concretely a historical problem. 
the monetary policy of the Bank of England in the 18th century and 19th century. I found Laka eminently helpful. It is not Laka actually. It is the whole scientific tradition that I am using. So Karl Marx is a scientist. Karl Marx is not bullshitting at all. And Lacan is also a scientist. And Lacan is a theorist of ideology, whereas Marx was a theorist of what is popular, popularly called economics. But as a matter of fact, Marx is not an economist as, as such. And Lacan is not a psychoanalyst as such. But Lacan always denied that. I'm not. When people said, are you a philosopher? Lacan said, if anything, I'm an anti-philosopher. Why? Because philosophers deceive. I would say in that sense, he's also an anti-psychoanalyst. This was a challenge. I think those of you, this book is also now available freely on the internet. In English translation at least. And if you read French, I gave a free book to everybody. This one. My teaching. This is Lacan's original. When his book was first published in 1966, he was 66 years old. Then he was called by all institutions, hospitals, universities to give lectures on his book. So there are three of his lectures collected in these books. It's called Mon on Sign Ma. My teaching. This is the English translation. I try to read them in French and English side by side because my French is not good. So I keep trying to improve them. Lacan is super in French. And when you study him, you will understand a little bit better. Those of you who have the passions to read Lacan in uh, French, and for you there is advice. Those who read French will, it is hoped, turn to the original and enjoy its challenge as much as did this translator. I would like to end there if you don't have further questions. Yes, sir, Rama, Rigan. One, one last question, please. I'm just thinking about the relation between true reality and unconsciousness. I think there's a there must be a line to be true. Because when you think about the truth, that should be a, try to be a something kind of maximum objectivity to get the truth. But when you think about the reality, reality kind of subjectivity and, and unconsciousness right now, I'm quite confused. You should be confused. I mean, if I did not succeed in confusing you, my whole lecture <laughs> is totally, totally wasted. Okay, let me tell you this. There is a word called reality. What is reality principle? And then in order to understand that, juxtapose the other principle called the pleasure principle. Reality principle can be therefore called the pain principle, if you want to understand. Those of you who study microeconomics in the business administration department, probably they will help me here out. And now we are all utility maximizers. What does it mean? We are also disutility minimizers. When there is a goods, the opposite is bad. So when I want all the goods, I want to maximize the utility from it. A glass of water first is 30 util. The next one will be 25. The next one will be 20, etc. It's called law of declining marginal utility. And this is what Marx says. The, what does the bourgeois know? He knows his equality his freedom and his property and finally his self-interest which is called Bantam. But here I'm talking about a reality principle where you are giving for shukero laghiya agor bandhino ano le puriya gyalo. Ghar to bende chilen shukero junne agun lega puriya gese. Jokan ino moja ar junne jabal arek to moja arek to moja arek to moja. Moja beshi maartte gele gindu more jabe. There is a limit. Other, other maximization of pleasure may lead to complete rupture. She is a reality principle. She take a bole, je pitch on a shoriashe. Bole akon porace, a hadaja, uh, gorum lagi. So when utility, when Johannet Ishodus no kushum kushum gorum camel lagi, halo lagi. Kin to shit the gorum halagbe. I'm the chule the murgi hejabe. So that is the point. That pleasure and unpleasure are opposed to each other. So reality principle ka ke bole pleasure is shandane gelam kin the unpleasure bede jatche tokhon ami haat ke recoil recoil less rifle boli na amra ato pichone rifle dhakka dena na ade kin the dhakka beshi dile tapne guli korte parben na so here is the question of it's called reality principle reality principle mane fear of pain a pleasure principle mane in search of pleasure ekon du theke samne ne unconscious keno toiri hobe ki ei jonno bolche ami aajke kintu kono sexuality er kotha kintu boli nai lokkho koren it is within there what you are looking for pleasure, unconscious of the pleasure, Chukur and Freud, the Chatta Kotapola Chatter, so Chen Bulaka, she took in the Mucharan Kurine. Freud thinks that our mind is structured. 
ওইটা হচ্ছে বায়োলজিক্যাল স্ট্রাকচার মতো পারসেপশন কনসেপশন আমরা কি করে পারসিভ করি এবং তার মধ্যে রিসাফল করি আমার মনে যত মেমোরি থাকে সব তো মনে থাকে না 